Jurong condo can buy or buy buy. I realize that many viewers are always keen on specific properties that are close to their heart, whether it is HDB flats or private properties. In today's video, you are in for the treat because I am going to share with you a study that has never ever been done before, whether it is on any property research papers or on YouTube itself. This is a comparison of the performance of Jurong resale condominiums. Are they making good money or are they losing money? How well are they performing since launch day? Which condominium outperform and which condominium underperform? Today's study will comprise 13 resale condominiums in the Jurong area that comprise XEC to old resale condominiums to new launch condominiums that have ready TOP. Stay tuned to the end because you will be surprised by the outcome. Hi, my name is Alan from Alan Wee Property. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As usual, for my buy or buy buy property series, I'll be doing a very comprehensive study on the 13 condominiums in Jurong. I'll be comparing three sets of data over different timelines so that you can fully understand how each of these condominiums behave over time. Firstly, what if you are a long-term investor and buy when it was initial launch and keep it till now? Secondly, what if you are a mid-term investor and bought it 10 years ago? How well will your portfolio be performing to date? Thirdly, what if you are a short-term investor and bought just two years ago in 2020, which is just after the circuit breaker? when prices begin to trend upwards. Before we get started, let me run through each condominium briefly. Westmere is one of the pioneer EC that was completed in 1999. It's 25 years old with 280 units, which comprise only large three bedrooms units. It's 15 walking distance to Jurong East MRT station. Next, we have Ivory Heights, this is a HUDC that comprises 654 units of mainly large 3 to 4 bedrooms apartments. It's sitting on a huge land area that measures 800,000 square feet. And anyway, they are always talking about on block. J Gateway is located at the heart of Jurong Central and comprises 738 units of 1 to 4 bedrooms. It is among the newest condominium in Jurong that TOP in 2016. Let's go back to Chinese Garden MRT Station. We have Park Oasis. This is a huge condo with 950 units that comprise one to five bedrooms. This condo has always been an expect choice for its convenience and space. Next, we have Lake View, which is another new condo near Lakeside MRT Station. It TOP in 2017 and has 696 units. It's located near CSI International School and has a strong rental yield. Lake Grand, on the other hand, is another new condo with 710 units and TOP in 2019. It's the newest condo in Jurong. Similar to Lakeview, it comprises one to five bedrooms apartments. Down the road, we have Lakeshore, which has 848 units and TOP in 2008. It is also an expect choice for international schools and their families. It is also next to Lakeside MRT Station and within 1km to the popular Rulang Primary School. Park Oasis, on the other hand, has 638 units and TOP in 1998. It is popular with price-sensitive HDB upgraders and PRs They are not eligible for an HDB flat. Most of the units are decently spacious. Summerdale is an another OEC near Jurong West. It TOP in 2000 and has 432 units. There are only three bedrooms and this is by far the most affordable condominium in Jurong. Lake Home is located at the junction between Boon Lay Way and Corporation Road. It TOP in 2005 and has 369 units. For those looking at affordable condo at 1000 per square feet, you can consider Lake Homes. Lake Point Condominium is my favorite condo in the West. If you have seen my other videos, you will have realized I have talked about this condo a few times. 
Lake Point is developed by Jurong Town Corporation with 304 units and TOP in 1987. They are mainly two to five bedrooms units. Caspian, on the other hand, TOP in 2012 and has 712 units. Caspian is linked to Lakeside MRT Station and is popular with HDB carbon graders and investor back when it was initial launched in 2009. Lastly, we have Lakefront Residence, who is among the newest condo in Jurong that TOP in 2014 with 629 units. It is next to Lakeside MRT Station and Jurong Lake. So much of the brief introduction. Here, I have done most of the heavy lifting for you. For my calculation, I will only use three bedrooms data for comparison. I will average the price in per square feet. Before we get started, do you want to make a guess which condominium will perform the best from the short to mid to long term? Will it be the newer condominium such as Lakeview or Lakefront Residence? Or will it be the aging HUDC or even the XEC? Pause this video for a while and think about it before you proceed. You will definitely be in for a surprise. In this table, I will only compare the projects that have data recorded when they are first launched for sale. I will exclude those older condominiums where the system did not capture their transactions because they are too long ago. I will compare the average launch price back then to the average resale price in 2022. I will only use data for three bedrooms apartments across all 13 condominiums to be consistent in my calculation. Here, we can observe that XEC, like Westmere, achieved 125% return to date. When it was first launched for sale, it was selling for just 400 per square feet. Today, the going rate is $900 per square feet. Likewise, the Lakeshore, Lake Homes, and Caspian have seen their value appreciate by more than 100% return. Newer condos such as J Gateway and Lakefront Residence did relatively well at 32% and 30% return respectively. But newer condos such as Lake View and Lake Grant have fared so-so only at 50% return. Some of you here may say, Alan, this is not accurate because some are older condominium and some are newer. No problem. To be fair, I also calculate their annualized return. This means that I divide the return by the number of years it has been holding on to the initial launch price. We can see both Lakeshore and Caspian have achieved a strong 7% and 8% annualized return. Caspian is the clear winner here as it was launched at a low 597 per square feet in 2009, which is also coincidentally during the US subprime crisis. Those that bought during a crisis and hold till date, or what? Congratulations. <laughs> this is the average price for all the three bedrooms condominium in 2012 and in 2022. J Gateway, Lake View, and Lake Grand are launched after 2012. Hence, I will omit their data. Lake Homes and Lakefront Residents did relatively well with 28% and 23% return respectively. They are generally newer and this explains why they are still in demand. On the other hand, Westmere, Park Vista and Summerdale prices begin to stagnate at the 10% range. This can be explained because of its depreciating lease. That is why I always avoid all 99 years condominium with no compelling exit strategy. The clear winner here are older condominiums such as Ivory Heights and Lake Point Condominium, which achieve a respectable 42% and 49% return. This is pretty attractive in my opinion. By the way, I have spent many hours on this video. Appreciate if you can help me to click on the like and subscribe button if you have not done so. Next, we will compare what if you are a short-term investor that bought in 2020, just after the circuit breaker. How well will your portfolio be doing now? The condominium that fared the worst is Lake Grand, where it achieved a 2% return in the last two years. This could be because of the high entry price at 1500 per square feet. Buyers can easily buy a 3-bedroom apartment elsewhere 
as compared to a two-bedroom apartment in Lake Grand. The Lake Shore and Lake Homes did surprisingly well too, with a 70% return. This can be explained because of their affordability entry price back in 2020. I still recall I told some clients to buy Lake Shore at below 1,000 per square feet in Jurong. This is definitely undervalued. Moreover, CSI International School and Rulang Primary School are nearby. Plus the remaking of Jurong Lake and Jurong as the next CBD. How can you go wrong? I still think both of them are pretty affordable condominiums in the Jurong area at today's prices. If you are a HDB upgrader and die die want to upgrade, I think you can consider them before Wing Thai launched its new condo at 2300 per square feet mark. Here, which condo outperformed the rest? This is none other than my favorite condo, which is known as Lake Point Condominium. If you have purchased Lake Point in 2020, your average per square feet is only 655 per square feet. Today, it's a high of 857 per square feet. This means that prices have appreciated 31% in just two years. I think prices will continue to inch upwards in the next 18 months till we hit a high of 1,000 per square feet. For those that you can hold on under 2025, you will receive another big ang pao. Congratulations! Some of you here may say, Alan, why didn't you tell me earlier? Now then tell me, tell what the ah. Brother and sisters, for those that have watched my earlier video on how to identify undervalued property, a real case study of Lake Point Condominium, and took massive action, you will be making a cool 400,000 profit right now, or the cool 15% analyzed return. I got hinted at you very clearly. If you never take action, I also cannot help you. By the way, I know my name is not called Eugene, Marcus, or some even say Kelvin. My name is Alan Wee. So when Alan Wee talk, nobody will listen one. Nah. Some say I talk nonsense. Some say I sell Goyo. It's okay. No problem. Let's move on. <laughs> In summary, don't underestimate old condominiums. They may look old, but if the price are right, you will be go. However, not all old condos can be considered. Some were stagnant in price after a certain age. So it will be good to exit after they cross a certain milestone. Again, not all new condominiums will make good money. Those with a strong selling point, such as J Gateway and low competition, will generally do well. That's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this session and see you soon.